Welcome to the Leaders of Learning podcast. In this episode, we will speak with Dr. Roisin Lyons. Roisin is a friend of mine and she is an educator. She's got a lot of really interesting experience because she started her career as a science teacher uh, and now she is a doctor in entrepreneurship education at the University of Limerick. I became friends with Roisin when we both returned to education as mature students to do a master's at DCU Business School. And at the end of that master's, we both continued our journey with DCU. Roisin signed up to do a PhD in entrepreneurship education, and I worked in, ed- in industry engagement, supporting hundreds of entrepreneurs via funded research projects. Now, during that time, Roisin developed an exciting module for first year students called DICE, that is D I. CE, and that stands for Digital Innovation, Creativity and Enterprise. And what's interesting about DICE is that students are never taught in the conventional sense of classrooms and lecturing. Instead, they learn through teamwork, through e-learning, project work and attendance at mini conferences with speakers from the wider business community and society covering topics like creativity, social media, digital innovation, startups, and social enterprise. The rationale for the DICE module was to expose students to the real world and different modes of learning as early as possible. And doing that, students were able to gain insight into the reality of the business world while also developing skills in some of those areas. Now, while Roshin was doing all of that, she was also researching entrepreneurship education and has since gone on to become a thought leader in the space, both in Ireland and internationally. And so as well as her research and teaching in entrepreneurship education at the University of Limerick, Roisin has always been entrepreneurial in her practice. She's been really involved in the startup community in Ireland for years. And recently, I got to witness Roisin in action when she led a hackathon as part of a project that I was involved in called EduHack. Now, the EduHack hackathon was designed to help educators collaborate and and work on solving educational problems using entrepreneurial frameworks such as the Hack Impact Canvas and the Value Proposition Canvas. And it was a really great way of helping people to learn about entrepreneurship through entrepreneurship. And what I noticed about Roisin's approach is that she has a really wonderful way of facilitating learning and helping people to be entrepreneurial um, by guiding them rather than lecturing them, which I think is a wonderful quality and skill to have as an educator. So I think you will really appreciate this episode. Hopefully you'll have several light bulb moments as I did. This episode, it is only 45 minutes long, but I think when you hear Roisin's wisdom, you'll appreciate just how broad and deep her knowledge is on this subject and how amazing it is to to hear somebody share so much insight and speak so fluently about a topic. It's something that that I would love to aspire to be. Um, I hope you enjoy this episode. Have a listen. Roisin, thanks. Roisin Lyons, um, one of the, the top entrepreneurship educators in the country. Um, you've thought deeply about entrepreneurship education. You've written a lot and and you've done a lot in terms of supporting entrepreneurs in all sorts of different domains. Um, and very grateful to, for you to join the Leaders of Learning podcast this morning. Well, I'm, um, delighted. I'm delighted to be here. And I um, <laughs> that was a, a great in, intro, Sean. I'm not sure if I deserve a lot of it, but okay. <laughs> uh, that's, that's all right. Um, well, it's, it's, it's not all right. It's, it's the truth, actually. And, uh, and you're also uh, a pal, actually, because years ago, back in the day, we actually did a master's together in yes. business management. And one of the things that I recall from that master's is that before that you had actually been a teacher. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I am trained to be a science teacher, chemistry, biology and maths for kind of secondary school, high school. Um, And I worked in that for a little bit before then joining you on the master's program in business. So yeah, always, always coming from, from education, pedagogy and that kind of 
moved through, you know, past the, the master's. Um, I did a PhD in entrepreneurship education. Um, and so since then, you know, I've had a real passion for pedagogy and, um, and, you know, teaching kind of innovation entrepreneurship in innovative kinds of ways. So, yeah. That's, yeah. Can you explain that a bit? Oh, um, sure. Uh, I, I just think it's such a cool subject. I mean, stemming from teaching science, you know, science is a very interesting subject to teach, you know, because you're doing labs, you're doing experiments and there's, you know, lots of moving parts and lots of discovery. And I think that aspect or that kind of innovation in teaching was something that always inspired me and you know even when I was in 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 UL actually studying my undergraduate degree there was loads of modules on you know curriculum development but curriculum exploration we had to try and come up with a new to the world experiment in one of our modules you know those types of things I always just found them very creative tasks very fun tasks um to be involved in and you know then when I moved into the world of entrepreneurship kind of an, an innovation it was the exact same to me I didn't think that there was any real difference um in the subjects because they were all about discovering new things and you know applications of discoveries so it would make sense then that the module itself would be taught in a kind of in a creative and scientific way in that respect so I just thought it was such an opportunity to do novel things and you know particularly when you teach innovation, I think, you know, because you're looking at what's coming next and new technologies, you know, you have to keep kind of livening up and changing what you're doing and, and the way that you do it. It's just the nature of the beast. It's it's constantly iterating. Um, so, yeah, I've always I've always approached um, my teaching in that respect, you know, it isn't a dreary subject. I'm not sure if there is such a thing really, because I think any subject can do with a little bit of, of, of creative ideas. And, but also I think you need to change your teaching methods or your, or the way that you teach or the pedagogy that you use, you know, in line with what the students need. Um, and the students are constantly changing as well. So, um, in that respect, I, I've always considered, okay, well, what does this gang? have what do they know how to do what do they need you know how can i pull that in um to to what i'm teaching that's interesting because it, it, it something that i've been mulling over is the idea of entrepreneurship and education not being a million miles away from each other in terms of as an educator you need to think about who is your audience and and how do we need to communicate with that audience for them to understand what we have to say. And then also thinking about like, what does this audience need in, in terms of, of creating value for them? And sure. as an entrepreneur, they think the same thing. Yeah. Um, and, and in a commercial sense, they might use the word customer, but we're still talking about a beneficiary. Yeah. Um, I, I think that before teachers, move into teaching entrepreneurship, you know, and especially given the the topic that we're interested in, Sean, you know, the word entrepreneurship can be a barrier for a lot of teachers and a lot of people actually, you know, because they just think it's kind of, you know, it's in a different, you know, industry or it's a different kind of subject. It's away from what they're doing, but really entrepreneurship is problem solving. That's what it was rooted in. You know, it's, finding a need out there, as you say, finding the user group or the customers um, that require a solution and then working through what a solution like that would work, you know, would be in a practical sense. And so I think any teacher that struggles with whether they're the right person to teach this subject, with a lot, which a lot of us have that kind of imposter syndrome, but also is this a good subject or is this a useful su subject for my students? You know, it is what do you think it is just problem solving um, and getting your students to connect with that idea of, you know, learning how to problem solve in a practical sense. So, you know, what's the issue? How do we you know, who has this issue? How prevalent is this issue? How would we go about solving it? What would a solution look like and how practical is that solution? That's really the 
you know, the start point were behind idea generation. And, you know, that's a hugely useful and important given all the challenges we face today. That's a great skill to have. Now, not saying that isn't in lots of other subjects, it completely is. You know, in the entrepreneurship teaching, we take it a little bit further than the, just the problem solving because we say, that's a really good solution. Who else would benefit from that solution? Is there a way of turning that solution into a business idea? That that next step of, you know, would it be a, a viable business option? Could I turn this into a career? That's the next, the nice next step with entrepreneurship. That can be really fun and engaging for students. But, you know, I think, yeah, as you say, it does mirror teaching and, and entrepreneurship does mirror the same approach because it all mirrors problem solving and teachers are born problem solvers. You know, they're, they literally are connecting with students every day and responding to their needs and developing solutions for that, for that student. So, you know, it makes sense that these would work in line with one another because they are kind of cut from the same cloth. I think that's a great point that a lot of teachers are actually quite entrepreneurial in their practice yeah. and they just don't necessarily associate themselves with being entrepreneurial, but they are. Yeah. And, you know, it's, you know, some people say, oh, sure, entrepreneurship is just a fancy term for this or that or the other. And like, yeah, absolutely. You know, it, it does. If you focus only on the kind of the money making aspect of it, of it, it does seem like a million miles away from what you're doing. But when you bring it back to that, just that, you know, being innovative, being problem solving, recognizing issues, having a good kind of research ability to explore these issues and a bit of follow through to kind of see, you know, where this these would go. Teachers have that in spades. They've had to, you know, and they're great at using resources well and they're good at time management and they're good at communication you know they would make brilliant and a lot of them are, are very good entrepreneurs um and a lot of you know teachers are trying to do loads of other things or many of them work in charity or volunteering for that reason they're always trying to explore how to create value in other you know walks of life so yeah that's why i think and, and I do meet a lot of teachers that think, oh, sure, I don't know anything about business. I couldn't teach this subject. Um, and that's a genuine concern. And it's it's a reasonable thing to say because we need to be good at what we do to teach it. And that and that's, you know, it's good to have a, a certain measure of hesitation. But I think they, people just need to recognize their own skill set in all of those qualities that we just mentioned. The business hat on top can be learned and, 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 you know, the business hat on top can be knowledge that's provided from others or a course, you know, or a train the trainer approach. But that, as you say, that, that process beforehand and that kind of value creation system that that's already, that's already there for most of, most of the cohort. Yeah. And, and so how can, how can a teacher think about moving from, Okay, if we've we've identified that they have the mindset, but then to start equipping them with some of the other that you you use the word knowledge mm -hmm. there to okay. to to really hone in on being entrepreneurial and and to think about how they can teach this then as well. Sure. Well, I mean, you know, there are loads of kind of little, you know, there's certificates and courses and stuff. There's lots of information online. Um, there's a framework called Entrecom that, you know, is kind of the EU overarching entrepreneurship education framework that people could look at. And from that, there's loads of toolkits and resources that you could use to supplement your kind of understanding of this. Um, so I think there are a lot of resources out there of, you know, how to model what you think you already have and your own skill set into a more formalized on enterprise education or entrepreneurship education model. Um, and then, you know, pulling from kind of resources like YouTube, guest speakers, industry, you know, connect with maybe your local enterprise office and see if someone would come and give a talk to your students. There's lots of people doing this and there's lots of people that are interested in telling their story um, that can help. And then there's lots of competitions out there, especially in Ireland, 
you know, TY entrepreneurship competitions and, and such that you could connect to and then, you know, model your teaching in a line with the competitions that are existing. And I think that's always very helpful. That's at a kind of a second level perspective in, in third level or in adult education. It's the same. There are loads of different specific courses available that you could base what you're doing on. Um, I think for me, for your own kind of knowledge and interest, again, there are some online courses to, to consider. I would say that there's also loads of YouTube videos where you can explore what it, you know, what entrepreneurship education is. Then you can listen to some podcasts about entrepreneurship. Um, uh, our, our friend Gary Fox, The Entrepreneur Experiment, has a great podcast about um, entrepreneurship. And you can listen to kind of, you know, homegrown stories of entrepreneurs, their successes and failings and and their journey. And, and that'll inform your own your own knowledge about it and you'll start to kind of be more familiar with the terms and um, stuff. So I think there is a whole host of, of, of knowledge out there, as I said, that you could connect to and there are kind of structures and frameworks that will help as well. I, I think what you said something really interesting there about say podcasts and, and inviting entrepreneurs into the classroom and so on. And, and one of the things that I have found really interesting as I've scratched this up, the, the surface of this subject is just how open and willing entrepreneurs are to share their knowledge and share their experience. Because most entrepreneurs, they're walking around us, you know, they walk among us, they're people like you and I, they're, they're not all like Elon Musk. Um, and and they're willing to not only share their knowledge and experience, but be vulnerable and talk about how they've made mistakes and learn from those mistakes and so on. Yeah, no, I mean, it's it's an amazing community to be a part of. And I think, you know, I've really benefited from having lots of peers and colleagues and friends, um, you know, over the years that have been able to come into my classroom and mentor or judge competitions or speak to the students. Um, and as you say, you know, this is becoming more celebrated as a career in Ireland. I think entrepreneurship for a long time, people were seen as chancers and, uh, you know, cowboys and stuff. Now entrepreneurship is in its, in its era and, you know, people are coming and accepting the, res you know, the responsibility of being an entrepreneur and, and taking that seriously and, and trying to help other people around them become entrepreneurs too. Um, it is by no means an easy career or an easy thing to do. And so I think having and connecting to people that are going through it um, and bringing those stories into your classroom is, you know, it's inspiring, it's interesting, it's real. Um, and I think it's it's hugely important. I would caution, um, you know, inviting every single person into your classroom. I always have a, you know, a healthy level of kind of just checks and measures. So I'd always have a conversation with the entrepreneur before they'd enter the classroom, before they connect with your students, um, just to make sure that you're on the same page. Um, because as you say, there isn't a clear line to success in entrepreneurship. So you just want to make sure that the lessons learned by this specific person are the lessons that you want to convey to your student group. And just making sure that they're not telling you, oh, quit college or quit school. <laughs> you don't need any of it. Um, you know, because people have had different paths to success. Um, yeah. You don't need to mirror every single path perfectly to get the overall kind of inspiration behind entrepreneurship. But there's so many types. And I think, John, that's that's why it's such a cool subject to be involved in. And it's such a an amazing phenomenon because lots of people can be entrepreneurs. There's no stereotype perspective because, you know, it's such, it has such an, a power to emancipate people. It's, you know, you'd see it in the developing countries in minority groups that entrepreneurship is something that can really give people agency, give people control of their lives, give people a way of, of you know, f finding food for their family. So, you know, I think there are so many stories that you can bring into your classroom to show people like, you know, you could do this at any age, you could do this, you know, in any circumstance. Um, so I think it's, 
it's a lovely lesson for students of any age to 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 see and to be part of as well. Yeah, and, and I think part of that lesson is that a lot of entrepreneurs' motives are very different. Mm. Um that they might be really passionate about a, a topic and they really want to lean into that. Um as opposed to perhaps the stereotype might be that all entrepreneurs have the same goal, which might be, for example, to get rich, but that's yeah. not necessarily it. And and you said something there about education. Um, I, there's the famous 0.1% of entrepreneurs, your Mark Zuckerberg, who will say, oh yeah, I left school or whatever, but that's not, no. they're just the ones we know about, but they're not, that's not the reality. Sure. And like school looks different to everybody now. So, you know, there's few people that haven't in this, in the entrepreneurship, that haven't done some extra training or courses or certificates, you know, school looks different now for everyone. So um, there are very few entrepreneurs that haven't had, you know, haven't had the forethought of saying, you know what, I actually don't know this part of accounting. I might do an extra certificate in it. Or, you know, I, I did a business degree and I moved into entrepreneurship, whatever it is people connect to information and, and, and that makes sense now. Um, but yeah, I go what you say. It's it's very true that most people don't wake up in the morning and say, you know what, I'm going to start a business. I need to get 100 euro by next week. No, they, you know, they're chefs in a kitchen that have, that routinely keep, you know, knocking something off a shelf and say like, why doesn't someone build a tool that, that fixes that? Or, you know, it's a teacher that thinks there's a better way of teaching this math subject and just it keeps frustrating them that it doesn't exist. And then they start to say to themselves, well, if no one's done it before, maybe I have to do it. Or, you know, for social enterprises and nonprofits, it's, you know, connecting to the needs of a community and being frustrated that those needs aren't being met. So a lot of people are not necessarily pushed into entrepreneurship, but a lot of people go, you know, yeah, solution first and connecting to that solution first and then build the kind of business architecture around it um, as 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 a, a way of kind of continuing that or, you know, as a recognition that they're, hey, I might be able to do this for a living. Um, so, yeah, you know, some teachers come to entrepreneurship education in an indirect way, very similar for entrepreneurs. Um, you know, it's 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 the same process of, okay, well, how how would I go about this? What would this look like? And that's why it's so important. There's so many mentors, like we mentioned before, you know, past entrepreneurs that are willing to give up their time to new entrepreneurs or, you know, intending ones. And structures like our local enterprise boards and you know enterprise ireland and, and people to to offer yeah supports what if you're thinking of starting a business let's let's figure it out um so yeah the the kind of there are a few that wake up in the morning and say i'm going to be an entrepreneur um the ones that do often have to kind of explore their own passion so you know for a lot of our business students they focus in on the stuff that they're interested in it might be a sport or it might be you know yeah like a, a person that they met in a networking event that explains some some issue or some problem and then they explore it together but yeah lots of different roads yeah and, and you use the word risk there and you're talking about risk you mentioned the word risk and then you're talking about supports yeah. and it, it occurs to me like risk taking will often show up as being say a trait of somebody who's entrepreneurial but when we're talking about risk taking we're not talking about betting the house on black <laughs> Um, like if it's if it's the chef coming up with a solution in their kitchen or that the teacher coming up with a so solution in their classroom, the risk might be just that they've they they spend a few hours of an evening for a while determining whether their their idea is a valid one. Yeah, I mean it's funny actually in the research literature initially um the term was called calculated risk taking. A lot of people now use risk taking and they've kind of shortened it, but I actually think the calculated is very important there because it's measured. You know, it's it, it like you say, it's not 
you know, entrepreneurs aren't risking, like, yeah, they're big gamblers or, you know, they are calculated people. They look and they explore, you know, what have I to lose? What I have I to gain? What are the resources that I need to attain? And take measured steps toward that and take measured, you know, you are entering new ground, new territory, you know, entrepreneurs are pioneering. So there's always going to be a certain level of risk in what they do. That's the nature of the beast. They're interrupters and disruptors. Um, but, you know, it, yeah, there there has to be kind of level grounding. Having said that, you know, lots of entrepreneurs do have to take a lot of personal sacrifice in doing what they do. They, a lot of them quit their jobs or, you know, might mortgage their house, God forbid. Um, so there can be, you know, a lot of intensity in that situation. And I do know that self-care is something that we're bringing into a lot of entrepreneurship programs now because there's, you know, an emotional struggle, a mental struggle. There's a, you know, um, it puts pressure on family dynamics. It puts pressure on friends and, and things, you know, it's not a traditional career that finishes at 5 p.m. on a, a Friday. It's it's something that permeates your whole life. So, again, like we talked about, talked about different types of entrepreneurs, different types of value that they're trying to create. You know, this is a different type of life um, with different relationships. So um, it's not your typical kind of job in that respect. Um, and a healthy dose of, of understanding of that's really important. So yeah, the risk taking one is, it's funny um, because Again, when you hear guest speakers or role models talking about it, sometimes they can kind of pump up the risk taking because they want to make it look very exciting and that they, you know, really did something new and novel and, you know, fair play. Um, most of them take on a heavy burden um, and they want to project that, that, you know, it's it's it, it does take a lot to to do these things, to sign those forms and, you know, step out into the unknown a bit. Yeah, and and in terms of stepping into the unknown and taking on that burden, I guess in the classroom it's very difficult. Well, well people can come and share their stories, but it, but it's difficult to convey to convey that in a message when when talking about entrepreneurship. But you you use the word competition yeah. a while ago, and I guess competitions can be a nice way of introducing or helping people navigate that um, uncertainty. Um, and and so I know you've organized lots of competitions in the form of kind of hackathons yeah. and stuff like that. Could you tell us a bit more about, about that? Sure. Yeah, so you're very right. You know, guest speakers um, and things are great ways for students to connect with stories and they can empathize through them, the better the storyteller, you know, the more they can kind of see themselves in those shoes. But it's no, you know, it, it, there's no questioning that kind of going through the experience yourself is 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 the greatest kind of teaching moment or learning moment. Um, and but it's hard to 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 do that in a classroom, um, in a way that's kind of, you know, high risk enough that it feels like it's it's transformative for the students, but without putting them under major kind of you know burdens. So. Um, Things like hackathons are great because they are, to, to kind of explain what they are, they're kind of short, intensive working group type competitions. Um, they usually take a kind of a certain length of time. It could be a weekend or it could be a half day, depending on how much you, you want to do it with the students. They break up into teams. You either set them challenges and problems that they need to explore innovative solutions to that might turn into business ideas or they just organically come up with a business idea themselves. It depends again on, on how you want to run it. And then during the hackathon, they connect with mentors. So they'll be sitting at their table working on their idea and at, at, at different intervals, mentors will come and try and help them shape that idea into you know something of a business nature. They'll work on those for a while you know, gathering research, maybe doing kind of mini interviews with potential customers to kind of validate what they're doing. And then at the end, they'll pitch that idea for judges. Um, and that's the competitive element of it. So it's kind of a rapid fire 
entrepreneurship journey and you know they'll get to explore the benefit of mentorship the you know the kind of the excitement and the frustration of idea generation the disappointment of finding that piece of research or that competitor that's doing what you do you know and experiencing that that disappointment that it's already existing you know trying to be resilient and pivot your idea or start again um and then the kind of the performative and communicative aspect of pitching and and the subsequent disappointment if if you're not the star uh, entrepreneur at the end so yeah it's a microcosm of the process um and done well and you know with care about the logistics um it can be very very exciting for the students and a very good learning opportunity usually then we would get them to reflect on the process and what it would be like if you were a real entrepreneur um it's not just the the busyness of the the event itself it's it's you know getting them to really kind of think about it from a, a career standpoint an emotional standpoint a business standpoint um and getting them to explore that but we have found them to be very very fun engaging they are quite a lot of administration and logistics for the teachers for them to be done properly so a healthy dose of kind of you know caution in that regard that they can't be done you know at short notice or they can't be done just by one teacher probably they need a little bit more um support for them to to hit that kind of momentum where they really start to feel kind of like a good flow with them um and then just to kind of say that you you know every student isn't the same some students have high anxiety some students have autism and like a big loud environment like that or forcing students to pitch you know in within a small frame of time to judges you know you need to be very careful of building in systems that work for the student profiles that you have and and considering every student within that system too that's a very good observation and yeah. and in terms of the hackathon process <laughs> I guess I guess it's, it's it's not as simple as saying come up with an idea and work it through and then present it back to us. We need to lead them through that process with different kinds of frameworks to help them think along the way. Oh God, sure. I mean, you know, we've all been in those situations, Sean, where we've been at icebreakers and events where they've asked us to think of something and you just feel so under threat. <laughs> you know, <laughs> so we don't want that you know for them at all and yeah it can be very difficult to to get them to feel comfortable in that space so you do you would play games and things just to kind of open up that creative thinking um allow them to consider or to understand that not every idea has to be great you know it's supposed to be a fun exercise we usually use the business model canvas or i kind of made a, a different version of it, the hack in back canvas where that kind of questions bring you through that process to help um that's a, an open canvas anybody can use it if they'd like but that that first stage can be crucial you know students of any nature if you lose them at the start they don't like the experience so i always focus on that part first and foremost so um you, you talked about the business model canvas you talked about uh, the hack yeah. impact canvas um like is there like what's the underlying pedagogy when you're sort of running those hackathons sure so um the one that i think hackathons aligns with the most is challenge-based learning um and i think that works very well as a kind of a pedagogy for this because you're setting the students a, a challenge um and then getting them to come up with solutions and there's kind of elements of technology involved um and different frameworks now challenge based learning it is kind of what it says it is um you know this kind of problematizing um a scenario and then and then then coming up with solutions as a result and then there's more to it than that but the part that i like is you know you can help to frame this workshop this this event with your students by helping to kind of structure it at the start. So what I would recommend and what I tend to do is 
I would either come up with a number of different challenges or set a theme for your event or your hackathon or your mini workshop and say, okay, today we're going to look at the problem of, um, you know, homelessness or uh, food shortage, you know, pick, pick a theme. And then that, that becomes the, the challenge that everybody's working on. Sure. I might limit students that have, a different passion or an area that they would like to work on, you know, so so you do need to consider that. But for students that struggle with the start point, having something to kind of frame them and say, you know, let's explore this challenge together and see, you know, what are the, the types of users or, you know, people that are in this situation. Let's look at it from all the different perspectives, what's already being done. You can bring in guest speakers and mentors that have experience and expertise in that core area to help inform the students and bring them through the process um, as well. So, you know, there's loads of different ways to do these types of workshops, these types of engaging high energy things. But that's one that I think works well if you're new to it and they're new to it and you're a bit concerned about not having the the, the knowledge or expertise in the, 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 the core areas that they would like to work on by the way i've seen hackathons being used really well in education where teachers are you know the profile and the challenge is like how do we you know embrace chat gpd and you know this this problem solving method has been used by loads of different groups in fact you know we use it in companies all of the time and i've been asked to help with a number of big organizations like analog devices for example they run hackathons um you know every year to try and get their employees to be innovative and to challenge assumptions and challenge norms um, as well so it's a method that has been seen to work in loads of different profile groups um i'd encourage any teachers to try it out or you know attend one i i always think that that's a really good way of um Kind of keeping you you on your toes and experiencing the the yeah the awkwardness and the frustration and you know the time pressures and things um it really gives you that sense now i'm i'm a weirdo sean like i would always do my own exam before i give it to students and time myself and um you know or i'll do an assignment or an essay before i give it to somebody else and work through it my myself I think that that's you have to keep connecting to yourself as a student you know you're you're great at it um Sean but uh yeah you know the further we distance ourselves from any career area level you know that's especially as teachers that what that's when we become obsolete and students now are so different they're under so much pressure in ways that we can't imagine so you know, we we constantly need to check ourselves. So I would, yeah, encourage, go to a hackathon. There's loads of them. Even if you're scared of going to an entrepreneurship, a startup one in your city or region, just try like the, you know, your, your experience as a teacher is valid. It's important. You know, you're a great communicator. You're a great problem solver. You would be a, an asset to any team. So don't, you know, don't count yourself out. Um, and so, you know, attend one of those and then see, yeah, that's cool. I could bring this into my students or even better, go to one and mine it for contacts and say, hey, I'm thinking of doing something in my school or my area. Would you be interested in mentoring at that too? You know, every day is an opportunity to barter. So uh, <laughs> that's, the... that's very entrepreneurial of you, Roisin. Yeah, you have to do it. Sure, I've asked I've, my friends and contacts and everywhere I go, even on a plane lately, I, you know, I'm always just kind of saying, can I take your contact details? Because, you know, entrepreneurship requires people. It, 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 it has to, you know, I can't, one teacher can't explain the full journey of entrepreneurship on their own in isolation. It is not a closed door subject. So, you, you constantly have to cycle different profiles of entrepreneurs in, you know, of different genders and of different age profiles. Um, you have to show people the mix of, of what the, the 
career is like. And by the way, I would say just kind of, I, I, I always like to get this into any topic like this, that creating entrepreneurs isn't the end goal for this subject. Um, you know, it's creating an enterprise community, which you are then a part of, um, you know, very good entrepreneurs move in and out of that journey and sometimes they work in a company and then they start their own thing and maybe they sell that on or it doesn't work out and then they go back to a company again and that's not a failure that's them having some expertise trying one element of a career and moving moving on some people will do this subject and never become an entrepreneur decide that they would never like to do it but still have the confidence to be able to inform their brother, sister, mother, friend about it if they were choosing to do it. So it's that kind of rising tide approach that, you know, the better we are problem solving, innovating, coming up with solutions, testing viable ideas, being better consumers, being better users, that improves the quality of products and services out there, the availability of good career options, um, and kind of society as a whole, because we become more demanding customers, users when we understand the process. So, you know, yeah, the ROI or the return on these subjects is not as not 74 Elon Musk's. It's, you know, 74 people that now can connect to this way of, of thinking, to this way of life and to this career option. So much wisdom packed in what you just said there, Roisin. And, and, and I think you, like you're so right there in terms of of helping people to be entrepreneurial as opposed to become entrepreneurs. You mentioned ChatGPT and, and how challenging it is for young people now that like there's so much change to navigate. Um, it, it occurs to me that we will all need to be entrepreneurial whatever we do in our career in order to be able to nap to continue to navigate all of that change yeah and i mean and so will we because you know in our era climate change and and you know really disruptive technology you know they they are going to be part of our, our next 10 years um and so we all have to think on our feet a little bit and you know have ways of connecting to information and and helping to you know elevate those innovators that want to do good within companies and on their own. Um, so yeah, it's it's kind of up to us all. And you know, entrepreneurship, civics, science, you know, these are all subjects that are important to help to facilitate change. Um, so we shouldn't count ourselves out of it either. Um, you know, it's. It's it's a fascinating time. Now, having said that, we've we've all we are, are entrepreneurial. You know, we've already done it. We've we've survived a pandemic. The most entrepreneurial group or innovative group at that perspective time to me were the nurses. Um, you know, any all of the good ideas about kind of process change and systems change in hospitals came from them recognizing problems and adapting. Um, so. You know, we've already we've already trained that muscle. It's just about continuing it and letting it flourish for for the next gang to to embrace it. You know, that's that's cool. And what better group of people to to help enable that or facilitate that than people who are trained as teachers or you know have have embraced teaching? You know, it's it's our calling now. We have to kind of keep pushing that that forward because you know innovation is is the thing that will help. Wonderful. Roisin, is there anything that else that you'd like to share or is there anything that I haven't asked about entrepreneurship or entrepreneurship education that I should have asked that you think this is a message I would like to get across to teachers? Um, no, I just think that there is power and support. Um, lots of teachers think they're doing a good job teaching this subject and, you know, many are, and, you know, I think I'm doing a good job most of the time, but, you know, there's a network of people doing really cool things. Um, and the more we connect in with that bunch, you know, the, the better what we're doing, the, the better scale of what we're doing. So um, it can get 
it, it can get easier at times to revert to your kind of working model and your working subject. And, you know, you've tried and tested it and, 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 and I'm victim of that as well. You know, I think, you know, this is the way to do it, but, um, pull from a network of enterprise educators, find them. They, they do exist, even if it's in an online for, format or not. Um, and, and keep talking and having those conversations with, your students, but also your teachers and saying, like, what are you doing to combat this? You mentioned ChatGPT, Sean. Like, you know, you can't teach innovation and not be excited by this and terrified by this in equal measure. But it is changing the paradigm of teaching more than it than other things have in the past while. And the way that we embrace it is through that network of teachers. If we you know, it'll wash over us and completely engulf us if we're on our own trying to figure it out. But, you know, this is where the power of teachers as communicators and teachers as collaborators really comes into effect. So it doesn't matter who you're teaching, you know, and, and, and I, I use the word student and I imagine it in different contexts. Um, it doesn't matter what you're teaching, but like people should be able to contact each other and say, how did you navigate this in a college? Because I'm trying to figure it out in, uh, you know, in a secondary school, and I'd love to to just get a get an idea of how you're doing it. Yeah, we need to to kind of open up and be transparent about our successes and our failures. Nothing more useful than having a teacher come up and say, you know what, I did this, completely backfired. Like that's so useful to know because you say, okay, why? Can we try and figure it out? You know, let's 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 brainstorm what what part didn't work and which part didn't, you know, wasn't worth money and which part wasn't worth the time um, and, and try and kind of yeah, problem solve our way through that again. But I uh, yeah, really enjoyed bluffing away for the last hour. It's great, great fun. <laughs> So much wisdom uh, there, Roshi. That was incredible. Uh, Dr. Roshi in Lyons is a lecturer of innovation and entrepreneurship in the Kemi Business School at the University of, of Limerick. Um, she has years of experience in, in Ireland and internationally um, teaching people about entrepreneurship, being entrepreneurial and, and supporting people both in students in their classroom and and entrepreneurs in all sorts of domains. Roshi, thank you so much for sharing your time and, and attempting to dis distill all of that incredible knowledge and wisdom you have down into, into this podcast. You're very welcome. And with the cold. <laughs> and with the cold. Thank you so much. Thanks, Sean. Great to hear from you. And good. You have been listening to the Leaders of Learning podcast. This podcast was produced as part of research that I've been doing in the field of entrepreneurship education. As part of my research, I am creating, co-creating and curating tools for educators to help them to improve their understanding of what it means to be entrepreneurial in their practice and also how to think about teaching entrepreneurship. Your host has been Sean Donnelly. If you like what you've heard, and if you'd like to learn more about my research, please visit padlet.com forward slash Sean P. Donnelly forward slash entrepreneurship education. That is padlet.com forward slash Sean P. Donnelly forward slash entrepreneurship education. Allow me to leave you with a quote. For the things we have to learn before we can do them, we learn by doing them. Aristotle.